Mr. President, 50 years ago, on January 27, 1964, Senator Margaret J. Smith of Maine announced her candidacy for President of the United States. The following July, at the Republican National Convention in San Francisco, the great lady from Maine became the first woman in history to have her name entered into nomination by a major party for our nation's highest office. I rise to commemorate this remarkable leader and this significant milestone in our history. At the time of her announcement, Senator Smith was in her 24th year in Congress and was an established groundbreaker. She was the first woman elected to both the House and the Senate and the first to serve on the Armed Services Committee. She was the woman who gave other women the opportunity to pursue careers in the military. Due to her early and energetic support for the space program, she has been called the woman who put a man on the moon. Her courageous declaration of conscience delivered in the Senate on June 1, 1950, turned the tide against McCarthyism and reminded all Americans of our nation's core values of free expression and independent thought. Mr. President, Senator Smith made her presidential announcement in a speech at the Women's National Press Club in Washington. Yes, Mr. President, there was a separate press club for women in those days. It was an important address in which she described both the progress that America had made against bigotry, prejudice, extremism, and hatred, as well as the challenges that remained. But Margaret Chase Smith saved the best for last. After telling her audience of the flood of letters that she had been receiving from all over the country urging her to run for president, Senator Smith described the reasons offered by her supporters, such as she had more experience at the national level than any of the other confirmed candidates, she had the stature that could break the barrier against women being seriously considered for president. She would provide a moderate middle-of-the-road option in an election that was shaping up as one between a very conservative and very liberal philosophy. Then she described the reasons that she should not run, the widespread contention that the presidency was a man's job, her lack of financial resources and a professional political organization, and the fact that the odds were stacked heavily against her. Senator Smith said that she found the reasons offered against running far more compelling than those in favor. So imagine the surprise of her audience when she said that because of those very reasons, she had decided to enter the New Hampshire primary. Senator Smith's campaign was off and running, and what a campaign it was. Senator Smith accepted no money from anyone all contributions, whether they were large or small, were returned to sender. She took to the campaign trail only when the Senate was not in session in order to preserve her perfect record of never missing a roll call vote and to keep the pledge of dedicated service she had made to the people of Maine. 
Her campaign motto was, there is nothing more effective than a handshake and a little conversation. As a consequence of her self-imposed financial and time restraints, Senator Smith did not win a primary. But in the one primary where she was able to campaign somewhat extensively, the state of Illinois for all of two weekends and a total expenditure of $85, she finished a strong second in a field of six. She lost only to the eventual nominee, Barry Goldwater. With 25% of the vote, she came in far ahead of such well-known candidates as Richard Nixon, Nelson Rockefeller, and Henry Cabot Lodge. It is intriguing to think what she might have done with a more traditional campaign. At the Republican National Convention in San Francisco that year, Senator Smith's name was entered into nomination by Senator George Aiken of Vermont. He told the delegates that Senator Smith's integrity, ability, common sense, and courage made her the best qualified person you ever voted for. On the first ballot, 27 delegates did vote for Margaret Chase Smith from the great state of Maine. Unlike the other candidates, Senator Smith did not release her delegates to the landslide victor, Senator Goldwater. That was not done out of spite. Indeed, she campaigned earnestly for him in the general election. It was done because she wanted to demonstrate, she wanted the historical record to show that a woman had been given serious consideration for the presidency of this country. Mr. President, many words have been spoken over many years in attempts to describe the character of Senator Margaret Chase Smith. Perhaps the best were offered by the candidate herself on that campaign trail a half century ago. She said, I have few illusions and no money, but I'm staying for the finish. When people keep telling you you can't do a thing, you kind of want to try. Mr. President, on this milestone anniversary, I'm honored to celebrate an extraordinary woman from Maine who tried and failed in one endeavor, but in doing so, inspired generations of Americans with her strength and determination, and demonstrated, as she once said, that a woman's place is everywhere. Today, Mr. President, the Senate has a record 20 women senators. In a sense, each of us owes a debt to Senator Margaret Chase Smith, but none more so than I. You see, I first met Senator Smith when I was a high school senior from Caribou, Maine. I was selected as one of two students to come to Washington as part of the Senate Youth Program sponsored by the William Randolph Hearst Foundation, a program that still exists today. I remember how excited I was to see Senator Smith and her graciousness in inviting her into her office and spending nearly two hours with me. As the presiding officer can appreciate, for any of us to spend two hours with anyone is remarkable nowadays. But Margaret Chase Smith carved out 
that time to talk with me. And recently, her library sent me copies of her appointment book for that day so that I could see that my appointment with her was listed and preserved for all time. She talked to me not about what it was like being the only woman in the Senate. She talked to me instead about her service on the Armed Services Committee, about what we could do to create more jobs in this country, and most of all, about her famous Declaration of Conscience in which she stood up against the smear campaign and the excesses of Senator Joseph McCarthy. Through that speech, she taught us all to stand tall for what we believe in and to speak out against injustice and bigotry. I remember, Mr. President, when I left her office, I was so thrilled and inspired. And I remember thinking that women could do anything. Now, this was back in 1971. And although I came from a family with wonderful role models in both my mother and my father, who were so active in their community and in their state. There were a lot of other messages about that time that raised doubts in the minds of girls growing up about whether we could, in fact, be whatever we wanted to be. So that message that I learned from Margaret Chase Smith was so important in shaping who I am today. And although I did not know it at the time at all, that meeting with Margaret Chase Smith shortly after I had turned 18 as a high school senior taught me that I could achieve my dream. And in many ways, it was the first step on a journey that led me to run for her seat in the United States Senate 25 years later. And today, I am so proud that the desk at which I stand, the desk that I use and is assigned to me on the Senate floor, once belonged to the legendary senator from Maine, Margaret Chase Smith. What a wonderful role model she was to me the entire time I was growing up when she was representing the state of Maine with such integrity, skill, and courage. And how fortunate I feel to hold her seat in the United States Senate. So today, it gives me great pride as well as great pleasure to inform my colleagues that this is the 50th anniversary of the day that Senator Margaret Chase Smith of Maine became the first woman in history to announce her, pres her candidacy for President of the United States and later that year to be the first woman to have her name placed in nomination by a major political party. Let us celebrate this day, Mr. President, as we also celebrate the presence of a record number of women in the United States Senate. I believe that would have made Senator Smith very proud. Thank you, Mr. President.